Next up is Louise uh, from UL to talk about something similar and um, building the arc. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so today I'm going to talk about a rather big journey that we've been on in the Glucksman Library of late. Earlier this year, the Glucksman Library installed an ASRS, which stands for Automated Storage and Retrieval System, in our newly built extension in the library. This method of storage has been used in many academic libraries across the US since the early 90s, and more recently in Australia and Japan. Now, we're very excited in UL because we've the first ASRS on site in a library in the British Isles. Um, now, we're not referring to it as an ASRS, as you can hear, it's quite a mouthful. And at times it does sound a little like something out of Father Ted. So we've decided to call it the ARC. So why is it needed? The ARC itself only uses one ninth of the equivalent of conventional shelving. It's far more efficient on space than the alternative that we would have gone for, which would have been compact shelving on each floor of the extension which would have housed 200,000 items. And I'll go through the ARC stats with you now in a moment. We're increasing our storage capacity, and this is allowing us to bring back items from our off-site off storage. And we're also planning to downsize on some of the shelving once collections have been moved into the ARC. This will allow more seats, more desks, and ultimately more collaborative working space. So without further ado, here it is. <laughs> so he, she, it, we're not quite decided on that yet. So what you can see is the yellow object in the middle is a rather large 50-foot crane, uh, which sits between one aisle. And at the end of the aisle, which would be just near this end of the screen, are two workstations where items are initially loaded. They're retrieved from here and stored back into the ark. The silver objects are 3,780 bins, and these can house up to approximately 500,000 books, which is a lot better than the alternative of the 200,000 in the compact shelving. And to date, we have loaded just over 90,000 items. So what are we putting in? Um, all items going into the ARC have to have a barcode. The reliance on Dewey is, is no more um, once they're in the ARC. It's all about the barcode. So our initial load was our library store, which was just over 75,000 low demand items, ma mainly books. We also loaded some collections, including our Jim Kemi and our Andy O'Mahony collection. And then we followed this by 10,000 items from our open shelves. And these are items with no recent loan history, say in the last 10 to 15 years. We've got a second load that's well underway at the moment. And again, little used and low demand items. And these were the ones that had been sent to offsite storage. So for example, a Hammersmith collection, multimedia in various formats, uh, video for example, um, a large microfilm collection, and again, further books. We've been loading now for two months, over five days a week, and three staff on time. At times we could have four or five, but generally three staff. So the items themselves, unfortunately, don't just prepare themselves, nor do they just load themselves into the ark. It's taken a fantastic team of nine library attendants. And on the right here, we have Mary and Carol, who are part of the library attendant team. and also 10 students who are the guys in the other two pictures. They've been working tirelessly on this project since last September, whilst continuing their daily core duties, and in the case of the students, studies and exams. So, preparation. The preparation started with some site visits, to, which included the Mansueto Library in Chicago, the Hunt Library in North Carolina, and Eastern Michigan University in Detroit. So here we were able to see the workings of the crane, ask 101 questions to the experts, and build invaluable contacts. Procedures and pre around the preparation of material and loading were compiled. 
So there are four bin heights, and for ease of loading, we measured the books against a high-tech template, which I've brought with me today. Here it is, laminated A3, very high-tech. So you have your four different color heights, um, relevant, four different bin heights, and you basically get said book, slip it onto the template. This falls in under the smallest um, color here, so it goes in the shallowest bin. So what happened then? The books then had a particular color coding. As you can see on the shelves here, there's pink and yellow, orange and green. And along the top of the book then, we wrote the last two digits of the barcodes, and that's for ease of retrieval, which I'll explain in a moment. So on, an, on a daily basis, items were checked for accuracy. Um, a book that's too tall for the bin will cause the crane to stop, and we were reliably informed in Chicago that it could slice the top of a book off, but that's not going to happen with us because our books are in the perfect bins. Uh, <laughs> the, in, in terms of systems, the integration of the ARC software, which is EMS, and our library management system, um, ALMA, uh, the barcodes of the items being relocated to the ARC had to be uploaded by the systems team in advance so that we they were ready when we moved the items into the ARC. And training was everything on what particular sticker to go on a book, where it needed to go on the book, the style the numbers were to be written in, to a three-day intensive systems and equipment training session with Domatic. Um, a select few of the team from the library, along with the buildings and maintenance team in UL, joined us at this point. Now, they're the lucky ones who get to go into the crane compound if there's an issue, and they're also the not-so-lucky ones who have to scale the crane itself if there is an issue with one of the bins up above up the height. Um, so, as you can imagine, this has been a huge shift to their job roles. So loading, I'll explain the hard hats in a moment. Um, the loading simplified is basically to get together a trolley of the same color coded books. It's a little bit like a supermarket trolley dash. So you grab the trolley of books, this is transported down to the, the ARC loading area, and it's here that the barcodes are scanned into the system and the item is placed into the bin. Each bin is broken up into different sectors to ease retrieval, and it's at the loading point that the loader will select the sector that the book is to go into. So we've been loading on average 2,500 to 3,000 books per day, and we found that a radio and lots of sugary cakes and sweets really helps. So retrieving, um, so uh, let me just get this right, just to backtrack. So in terms of retrieving, an item is requested at the catalogue, an email will be sent to the information desk team to alert staff. Alma then, this is quite simplified now what I'm going through, but basically an alert is sent to the crane which selects the bin containing the required item. The bin travels down the aisle on the crane and is delivered to one of the workstations. And it's at this point the system will highlight which sector of the bin contains the item. Which is kind of here. Um, a member of staff retrieves the item using the last two digits of the book, which is up here. And the item is scanned once to release it from the bin, and a receipt is printed out, and the item is taken to the information desk for collection by the user. So with every new project, there have been some challenges along the way. Um, the extension is still a building site, so hence the hard hats at all times, full PPE from hard hat, safety glasses, vests down to safety boots have to be worn at all times. There's no exceptions because we do risk being asked to leave the site. In terms of space, we didn't have an empty storage area to prepare the items moving to the ARC. So we started with the store, cleared this out, and this made space for us to prepare the items coming back from off-site. We also needed to ensure that the books were still available to students and faculty, just in case they were required. So if they had moved from one location, they still needed to be in a systematic order in the loading area. Library staff are not allowed into the crane area due to health and safety rules, so there can be a wait on the maintenance team, though to be fair to them, it's minimal. And of course, there are times of routine maintenance which can cause possible downtime. 
So our service model is being developed while we're in our so-called quiet period and would be ready to roll out in September. Items we know are easy to request from the catalogue with the email alert, alert sent to information desk staff. It literally takes seconds for the crane to select the correct bin, followed up by the item being retrieved then by library staff. We plan to review the items stored based on usage, so any heavily used items will then come out of the ark and will then be housed again back on the open shelves. And in terms of auditing, this will begin soon and is planned as an ongoing process. So the future. There will be ongoing collection life cycle management. We're erasing the need for off-site storage, saving money saving us money, and everything we have will be on site and quicker to retrieve. We'll hopefully have happier students, not that they're not happy at the moment, but um, hopefully they'll be happier, with more seating, desk space, and collaborative working areas. And to finish, the ARC has been a huge project that has involved multiple teams across the library getting us to where we are today. Our new building is not open yet, we're, we're nearly there. But when we do open for visitors and demonstrations, we look forward to seeing you all. Thank you.